So you're using OpenAI's Codex CLI and you're wondering, how can I add MCP servers to it to further expand its capabilities? Well, you're in the right place because in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that and explain why it's a little bit more tedious compared to the competing tools that are out there. We're gonna add two MCP servers to Codex CLI. The first one is Context7, as you can see here, which provides up-to-date documentation to your LLMs and AI code editors so that they are informed with all the latest changes on the technologies you might be using for your projects. And the second MCP server we're gonna set up is Sneak, which is a security tool that's gonna to help make sure that the output from our AI is not introducing security issues. Now, I mentioned at the top of the video that setting up MCP servers with Codex CLI is a little bit tedious right now as of this version that's available while recording this video. So what we're typically seeing from other providers is this format, right, in JSON, where you define the different MCP servers using key value pairs to define the command that's needed to set up that server, the arguments and any environment variables and so forth. This for Codex CLI is translated into a TOML file or config.toml. And that follows this syntax, which is not much different from the JSON, but can be slightly different and a little bit more tedious to manage. And you're more susceptible to get things kind of off and wrong when using this format. That said, let's go ahead and get started with setting up our first MCP server, which is Context7. All right, so first thing we need to do is check to see if there's an existing config TOML file. If not, we're gonna create one. The way you check for one is at the root directory of your user you're signed into on your operating system. In this case, it's Linux for me. We're gonna do LX codex to see what files are in the codex folder. Now in here, we could see there isn't one for a config.toml file. So I'm gonna create one by doing touch codex and then config.toml. Now I'll create one and we can see that it is indeed there now. So I'm gonna open up that config.toml file in VS Code using that code command, codex and then config.toml. And then I'm gonna tell it to reload it into this instance of VS Code with that hyphen R. And there we have it. So it's empty, nothing there, nothing available. It's just an empty file. We could generate it potentially if we wanted to, but we're not gonna do that in this case. So the first MCP server we're gonna set up is the context seven one. So we're gonna add the heading MCP underscore servers dot cont name it context seven. And then we're gonna put the configuration underneath it. We're gonna say args equals, and then open up some square brackets to pass in the args. We're gonna do hyphen Y to just say yes to everything. And we're gonna say at upstash, which is a great name, by the way, context seven hyphen MCP. So that's the package we're gonna be using via MPX. Then we're gonna add in the argument of API key. Then you're gonna put in your actual API key in here value. Obviously this is just a placeholder because I'm not gonna share my API key with you, sorry. Nice try, buddy. My disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined. And then that's it for the args. We close out with the closing square bracket right there. And then we're gonna pass in the command for it, which is just NPX now. And then we can save that. And that should have set up the Context7 MCP server for Codex CLI. So let's go test it out and see if it is indeed available and usable from Codex CLI. All right, back over in the command line, we're gonna run Codex and start it up. I'm gonna tell it, no, I want to be asked to approve edits. And now we're ready to enter in some of the commands, the slash command. So in this case, I'm gonna say slash MCP so that it lists configured MCP tools and we'll make sure that context seven is indeed showing up there. And that's awesome, it's great. And again, you're not getting my API key. <laughs> but it is available and set up correctly based on this display from the Codex CLI. All right, so with that MCP server set up, let's go ahead and try using it. So I'm gonna say, tell me about the NPM package documentation for Express.js, because maybe I'm learning how to use that with a Node project. I'm gonna send that in, and we're just gonna verify that Codex does indeed leverage the Context7 MCP server as a tool call. So it's exploring JS documentation, summarizing Express NPM docs, all right, so we could see it did indeed do a tool call for context7.resolve library ID express, came back successfully. However, because I haven't entered in my API key, that's why it didn't work successfully all the way to the point of getting a response back from context7. But had I put in an API key, we would get the results and it would give us more information and better answers in its response here on describing how to use express in a project. 
So this is a really great tool to add into your MCP servers with any AI coding tool that you might be using, especially Codex here. And it will help that AI model learn more about how to use the exact technologies that you're leveraging based on the documentation that's provided for each of those. Really quick, while I was messing around about not using my actual API key, I went ahead and put it in so that we could see the real results that we would get from this prompt and when Context 7 MCP server would be leveraged here. And in this case, it went and got results back from that tool, the model that we're using here, GPT-5, and came up with this concise tour of Express NPM package docs, noting that the current version, major version is version five, which is great, that is true, and a bunch of the details on how to get started using this particular package for our Node.js projects. So the idea here is with this information, this added context and documentation, our AI agent will do a better job of implementing the features needed for the prompt that you give it. With that in place, let's now go and add a second MCP server, Sneak. All right, in a similar fashion to what we did for Context 7, we're gonna add a new line. We're gonna prefix it with MCP underscore servers again, dot, and call it Sneak hyphen security. Then we're gonna say command. So I guess you can basically put these in any order. The command we're gonna be using again is MPX in this case. And then the args that you wanna pass into that are gonna be in an array, square brackets. We're gonna say hyphen Y. We're gonna say use sneak at latest for this. We're gonna spin up the MCP server and tell it the transport protocol to use for this is STD standard input output. And we'll save that. And there we go. We've set up the sneak MCP server for Codex CLI. Back over in our terminal now, we're gonna run Codex again and tell it no. And then we're gonna use the slash MCP command to double check our MCP tools. And we can see context seven is still there. And now sneak security has also been added with that command and the available tools that it provides. So let's give the sneak security MCP server a try. All right, so I went to a specific project folder in this AI security repo. I'm gonna spin up codex within this context here. I'm gonna tell it to please check for any security issues in my open source dependencies for this project. You can see it's running Sneak, it's checking the authentication status. All right, so I went to use Sneak, but it noticed that it didn't trust the folder yet, so I need to approve trusting the folder that we're working off of here, in this case, this, this project called O3 Mini High. So once I do that, it'll be able to run the scan. All right, now I have trusted this folder for Sneak to use it. I'm gonna prompt Codex to check for security issues in my open source dependencies for this project. All right, so it's checking the sneak auth status. We're authenticated. All right, so the SCA scan has run. It ran that tool, that MCP server tool from Sneak within Codex here. It's investigating package JSON contents. We got some information back from the Sneak SCA tool, and it's doing a little bit more checking, analyzing package vulnerabilities, checking version details, running a lot of commands. All right, so it looks like it finished, and here is what it found. We have a high severity vulnerability via tar FS, a medium one via cookie, on headers, and in flight. Oh, and then we got a brace expansion, which is a low severity one. Each one tells us the details about those vulnerabilities and how they're being introduced. Direct causes in my tree, it's telling me that. And then recommended actions, all helpful and driven from that sneak MCP server that we had. And then from here, we can take the next steps using this information to fix these vulnerabilities in our project. And there you have it. That's how you add MCP servers to OpenAI's Codex CLI tool. I'm curious, what MCP servers are you using with Codex CLI? Let me know in the comments below. That does it for this video. If you got value out of it, be sure to like it down below and share it with somebody who could put it to use. And if you made it this far, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. Thanks for watching and happy, safe coding, everyone.